Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2014 Chevy Sonic, we're going to be showing you how to install the Roadmaster stoplight switch. But before we do that, why don't we check this out and make sure it's something that you're going to need. The stoplight switch is going to be one of those parts that's really going to apply to those of you that use a supplemental braking system that has some sort of indicator light and gets its signal from the brake pedal. So for example, uh, our vehicle here today, we have the Demco stay, uh, stay in play. Uh, the uh, Invisibrake would be the same way, um, among others. Those are the big two that come to my mind that we do a lot of here. Uh, but the way those work is they're going to have some sort of indicator light either on your windshield or if it's wireless up inside of the coach that lights up whenever your brake pedal gets pushed down when you're flat tone from your braking system doing that work. And the reason being you'll need one of these switches is because whenever your Sonic is in flat toe mode, you can push this brake pedal down in the vehicle and it's not gonna, um, you know, it's not going to send any power out through that. And so by hardwiring essentially another stoplight switch, the Roadmaster one, um, it's gonna have power and be able to send that signal out whenever you're flat towing, allowing your indicator light to work. With that said, there are uh, other ways you can wire the braking system up to get those indicator lights to work without this stoplight switch. But the issues with them, uh, doing it that way, it's only kind of telling you half the story. So by hook wiring it up uh, in that fashion, not using the switch, it's just only going to tell you if that unit is turning on. It's not actually going to let you know if your brake pedal is being pushed down. So you could have nothing connected to your brake pedal and the unit's gonna turn on and tell you up, up in the uh, coach that everything's working. You think it's fine, but you know, you could be completely disconnected back here. And so that having that stoplight switch, it's actually going to detect that brake pedal movement. So you get a, a true reading knowing that your brake pedal is getting pushed down and releasing the way it should. But other than that, you know, it's one of those uh, overlooked parts a lot of times and this is the right way to do it. You know, kind of complete that whole package and have everything uh, working how you'd want it to. As far as the install goes, it's not bad. It's a couple of wires. Um, most difficult part is just working underneath the dash. You know, you just don't have a ton of space and kind of is what it is, but you only have to do it once and uh, you should be in pretty good shape. But speaking of that, why don't we go ahead and put it on up. To begin our installation for our stoplight switch, we're gonna be working here on the driver's side uh, by our brake pedal just underneath the dash. So here's our stoplight switch and I already got this installed and it's more beneficial like this as opposed to to watching me you know jam my hands in here and not being able to see anything. So this is pretty straightforward. The kit's going to come with a bracket. On one end of the bracket you take the actual stoplight switch and remove one of the nuts on it put the switch through, putting the nut back down, and you can snug them down. And then the other end of the bracket will go up by the firewall. There's an existing stud that this is gonna line up with. And you just uh, take the bracket, put it over the stud, take the included nut, and you wanna put some Loctite on it, uh, which we will have to source separately, and tighten that nut down. Um, and that's really all there is to, to mounting this up. You do want the switch to actually be pushing against the brake pedal arm. So you might have to kind of bend the bracket over a little bit just to get everything lined up. And what you're looking for is the switch to kind of uh, start to move a little bit right when that brake pedal starts to get pushed down. So it's uh, pretty straightforward there. And that's really about it as far as mounting it and everything. We're gonna have two wires though that we're gonna to need to hook up to it. So these two black wires coming out, uh, you can crimp on your blue uh, terminals there. And then I took the included wires and hooked them up inside of our terminals to route them over. The red one's gonna to go to power and the green one is going to go to our braking system. So these just run 
right over along here and get hooked up in this area. We pop this fuse cover off, a little easier to work with here. So the green wire, um, that's gonna go to our braking system, like I said, and it's just gonna depend on your braking system. You might have to reference the instructions, but usually this is gonna go to some type of indicator light. In our case, we have the uh, stay and play uh, braking system, and that's going to the red wire from our wireless transmitter. Um, I believe with just the indicator light one, it would be hooked up similar to that. Like I said, it's going to depend on your particular braking system, but nine times out of ten, it's going to go to some type of indicator light for the system. Um, and the red one is going to go to power. All right, and so in here, we can hook this up to our fuse holder and plug it into our fuse block. Here's the fuse holder that they give you. And the way this works is you're gonna find a fuse in the fuse block that has power uh, at all times, even with the key off. And on our particular vehicle, there was a ton of empty slots that weren't being used that had power, so I utilized that. If yours does not have those empty slots, the way this would work is you put the factory fuse in the bottom piece, in the bottom terminal there, and then the new 10 amp fuse up top, but since we don't have a factory fuse in the slot we're using, I just ran the one at the top. And when you do this, so when you check a, an empty fuse slot, right, on your fuse block, you take a test light, put it in there, and see if it has power. Well, without a fuse in it, only one side is gonna have power. And so when you plug this in, you wanna make sure that this side plugs into the side of our fuse block that has the power. That way the power will come up and actually run through the fuse. If you plug it this side in there, it's gonna bypass the fuse and render this useless essentially. So uh, the slot that I found and that I'm using is up a little bit higher. The fuse slot that I used was F23. Like I said, it was unused and that just pushes right into it. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Roadmaster stoplight switch on our 2014 Chevrolet Sonic.